Hello. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about teapots and starting to make a teapot by hand, not using the potter's wheel, but hand building. Now this video is going to be used for my ceramics class, for those of you in that class, as well as pottery on the wheel, which some students are going to be learning how to work with their hands because they don't have a wheel at home during this time. So I'll be speaking to both groups um, and some of the information will be new to some students. Um, when I get to the hand building techniques, you may find that you have a handle on that already if you've taken my ceramics class. So you may watch the introduction to this to get a sense of some examples and me talking about the assignment a little bit more. And then you can watch the rest of it if it's helpful to you in your own clay working at home for this assignment. So it's a little bit different. Everything's so different now for us. We're not in the studio at school and uh, it's an, a big adjustment for all of us. So I'm going to try to demonstrate in a way that can help you at home, I hope. <laughs> but I don't know what your situation is at home, so I'll do my best. So if you are on Canvas and you look at the module for this week, there's a lot of uh, information, lecture videos about Yixing teapots as well as sculptural teapots that are unglazed. So that's the assignment is for you to make a teapot of your own that's not intended to be glazed. Now it could be functional, could be sculptural, could be both. I'm going to keep it pretty simple today and show you uh, simple teapot forms and get started on making one, just the first steps, and then I'll have more videos as the clay firms up to uh, carry you through the process. So I mentioned Yi Xing teapots. Those are small Chinese unglazed teapots, specifically from Yi Xing, China. I have a couple examples here that are similar. They're not uh, Yi Xing. They're from Taiwan, but they're very small in terms of what most people think of a teapot. But for Chinese green tea and oolong tea, uh, whole leaf tea, they work great. And they are intended to be uh, unglazed and the tea seasons it inside. And so there's one example there of a beautiful red burnished clay body, very kind of shiny without a glaze because the clay has been polished before it was fired. Here's another one. So they're different teapots in, in their form in subtle ways. This one has a line going through here. This one is very spherical. I'll, I'll use these as kind of a mental reference uh, for a simple teapot form. And of course, when we're talking about teapots, there's three elements, four elements, sorry, four elements. There's the body, the lid, the spout, and the handle. Now, the handle can be placed in different areas of the teapot. There's a lot of different styles, but all teapots have those four elements. So if I set aside the uh, Yixing teapots for a moment, or actually the Chinese teapots, they're not exactly Yixing. Here's a, a teapot by Sandy Simon with a cane handle on top, so a different handle configuration, but the other elements are all made out of clay. So there's a lid there and our basic teapot form. They don't all have to be small teapots, right? So the same forms apply to larger teapots. I'm actually borrowing my wife's studio right now to record this video, and this was sitting on the shelf. She made this. It's greenware, bone dry, very fragile, so I had to be careful with it. But you can see her uh, style and approach to this particular teapot. It was thrown on the potter's wheel, but teapots always have a lot of hand building, even if all the elements are thrown on the potter's wheel. So it's a good way to learn about how hand building and wheel throwing interrelate to each other. The handle is 100% hand built. That's a pulled little handle for the top knob there. And then when you put it all together, it requires a lot of hand building skills. You can make the whole thing by hand and avoid the wheel altogether. That's what I'll show you later. One more teapot to show you. This is by uh, Megan Mitchell and it's like a porcelain clay body. And she used a lot of different techniques with slabs interlaid with uh, imagery and actually printing on the surface of it and 
wheel thrown spout combining that with the wheel thrown lid and a pulled handle to create this teapot that uh, works great. So hand building, wheel throwing, kind of a way to incorporate both of them is to make a teapot, a functional teapot. So some of uh, the things I talk about are really about function, but if you're going to take a sculptural approach, you just need to incorporate what would be a spout, a handle, a lid, and the body of the teapot, but it doesn't necessarily have to function. You could just play around with that format like Richard Notkin did or Alion, the uh, artist I showed you in the examples. So. Let's talk about working at home a little bit. So I'm going to move this. This is a banding wheel. You might notice that we have these at school, right? This would be just great for me to work on. Hand building and make the teapot. If you watch the videos in the module, there's the Yixing potters in the examples. They use one of these, and that's kind of how they make them. They spin them by hand, and they get them really uniform. Even though they're hand built, they use a slow wheel like this. And if you remember the, the history of the potter's wheel lecture I give, that's how wheel throwing developed, is through a small, slow uh, wheel like this with hand building techniques and then gradually merged into wheel throwing. However, if I demonstrate on this, that might not be more so helpful to you guys at home because you probably don't have one of these. Um, and so I'm gonna take it away and I'm just gonna work on this surface here and try to do everything without the aid of any banding wheel or potter's wheel at all. Now, the other thing is I'm going to try to keep things really simple with my tool use. So I have a few tools here and I have my clay ready and I'm going to get that out in a minute. Um, if I grab things that are studio related, it might not help you too much. So I'm trying to keep that in mind. Here's the clay body that I'm going to use is Navajo wheel clay. So you might have gotten some of this from the studio if you came in last week. And uh, one thing about using this clay is that it's really red. It's going to make your hands a little bit orange. It's just iron. So there's no issues uh, with uh, toxicity or health concerns at all. Um, but work in a way where you can keep it from being too messy. The best way to avoid it getting real messy is just don't use much water at all during the process and you won't smear it around. But be prepared because it'll be a somewhat of a red situation on your hands and your work surface. And so that's there. And then um, I have some examples of what the clay body looks like after it's fired. I was just testing these in the studio before we had to leave. So this is what it looks like at cone six. It was a glaze test, but you can see the bare clay there. It's so similar to the color in the bag, which is kind of nice because if you make it and you visually see it in the greenware stage, if you just mid-fire it, we're not going to glaze these, then what you see is what you get. Pretty close. Uh, I would even put it in the high fire kiln. It's rated to cone six in mid-fire clay, but it can handle high fire and it's a much more purple tone at high fire. I'll probably, we're still figuring out firings, but uh, we'll probably go for mid-fire, but just so you know, that might be an option. I'll let you know as we get further along uh, during this online home learning. Okay, so let's talk about making a teapot. If you look at this one, little tiny Chinese teapot here, the body and the lid make a sphere. So if you were in my ceramics class, you might remember in the first week of class, we made pinch pots into spherical shapes that then manipulated into other forms. That's one approach to doing this. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. So if you want a refresher on pinch pots, putting the two bowl shapes together to create a sphere, I'm gonna start that process today. Some of you maybe have never done that before, then watch along. Set this aside. So the amount of clay here, I'm gonna make a little bit larger teapot than I was just showing you. It doesn't have to be that small. I would suggest using clay about the size of your fist, maybe a little bit smaller. Just like when we were throwing on the wheel and you use that amount, or when you're in hand building, we did that the first time. And start with one chunk of clay. 
even though I'm going to make two halves and put them together, start with one and I'm going to whack in my hands a little bit. It's nice and mixed. I'm going to make it into, a, looks like a reptile egg. <laughs> so an oblong there. That's so that I can then cut it in half. So a good way whenever you're hand building and you want two parts to go together that are about the same size is cut the sizes of clay out of one piece and, and eyeball it to cut in half. You can measure it if you wanted to. So now I have two chunks that are about the same size. So pinch pots is the most fundamental way to hand build because you don't need to combine clay into itself. You can start with a piece of clay that fits comfortably in your hand. So use, put it in the middle of your non-dominant hand. So I'm right-handed, so I put it in my left hand. And you can see that I've turned my fingers or cut my hand to accept that round ball there. And then I'm gonna take my thumb and press it right into the middle. You can see that. And I'm gonna push down at least halfway, maybe a little past halfway. So it's just a big thumb indention. Then I'm churning this just a little ways and pushing my thumb in there again. So you can see the second thumb mark. And I'm gonna do that around and around. Let me see if I can get in a better angle here. So I'm pressing with my thumb into my hand. So my hand's cupped and it accepts this. So you want to go all the way around until you have something that looks like a really crude, thick bowl. So this actually relates to the other video I showed last week, which is the continuous curve bowl. Think of that continuous curve when you're making your pinch pot. Okay, I've shifted to another hand position. Thumb is inside, but my fingers on the outside now of my right hand, and I'm squeezing, pinching, so that's pinch pot, pinching the wall and slowly rotating it. Now this clay is really nice to work with. Clay bodies are different. If it's real dry or coarse or stiff, you'll get a lot of cracking on the surface. There's one little spot there. I can just blend that in with my finger. It feels really smooth and compliant for this kind of hand building. So that's the basics of pinching in your hands is to spin it and pinch like this. And don't really pinch because you'll do too much at once. You want to go around. So the other thing is to try to pay attention to the thickness from the top here, the lip, all the way to the bottom and really get a sense. This will help your pottery skills or your hand building skills, your sculpture skills, to really pay attention to thickness and try to get it as even as you can. Don't get this too thin too fast. It'll start to crack and wobble on you. So I'm reaching down there and I feel down in the bottom that there's some thickness and I'm gonna thin out the very bottom while my thumb can still reach, okay? Now I'm gonna Put this like uh, upside down and I'm going to rotate it a few times with both hands pinching. You can even maybe do it this way. Whatever you do, you want to slowly, steadily pinch and rotate. And so you can uh, try different things on its side, upside down, see what works for you. What you don't want to do, let me get back over here, I can show you. What you don't want to do is this. Don't put it out down on the table and try to, to pinch like this. It'll just totally flatten the bottom. We want it to create a sphere. So try to hold it in your hands. So I'm gonna pinch this thinner by going to, to the lip now, it's a little bit thick. And so I'm gonna thin that out. And continually go around pinching. It's pretty soft clay that I have. And so the softer the clay is, the more wobbly it is when you're creating this sphere, we're going to make two of these. 
and then let them firm up before we move on to the next step and just put them together. Okay, I've gotten quite a ways. I'll probably do a little bit more. But in the meantime, I'm going to put it down on, on my work surface and I'm going to put it on its rim. So put it upside down so it doesn't flatten out. Let me show you what that looks like. Yeah, go like that. All right, so I'm going to set this one aside because it was getting to the point where it was wobbling around a lot on me. And I'm going to try to get it back into its circle. Now I'm going to go to the other one and, and try to match it. So this one I'll go a little bit faster because you saw how I did it. And a little spot there. If you see a spot where there was like a little air bubble or a problem, like a little tiny crack or something, just smooth it in with your finger. You guys remember that throwing demonstration I did last week. You, I cut the first bowl in half. This is the clay from that bowl. And so I re-wedged it, but I, it, it wasn't perfectly out of the bag. So there's a couple spots there I had to blend in with my fingers. All right, so now I'm going to lift it up this way. So in theory, they should come out the same size if we started with the same amount of clay for each half, right? I'm using the left hand here. If your hands get tired, which might happen, switch your hands. See how you can do with your, your other hand. So I am getting there. I'm going to put this down for a moment. So if I'm real careful, I can pick this up in my hand like that, and I can pick this one here, and I can just do a test run here and see how well they fit. The first one is just a little bit wider than the second one that I did uh, because I haven't thinned it out quite as much. But I know that I'm in the ballpark, so that was just a test run there. Now I can... So just like the bowls that you throw on the wheel, there's a tendency for the clay to spread out. So you really want to focus on trying to make this as deep as you can, as like a half of a sphere. If you put it on the table at any point and try to pinch it like that, you will get something really flat like a dog dish. And that's not going to make a very good teapot body. Now, if you watch those videos or you see the Yixing teapots or the Chinese style teapots I have here, they're really thin. Um, for your project, you don't need to make it that thin. You know, that's, that's a challenge that you might want to meet. You would start with less clay, right, if you're going to make a small one thinner. But it's okay to, to, to keep it a quarter of an inch thick um, as, a, as a completed piece, especially if you're working sculpturally. Does it really matter if it's, you know, got a little extra weight to it? No, no, it doesn't. Um, just don't make it any thicker than your finger in any areas, right? Um, especially if you're gonna add elements later on, you don't wanna start with something too thick. It'd be a problem. All right. So let's go back to the first one. Let's see if I can move it in there. Putting it down on the flat surface also helps keep that rim flat. If you have a lot of problems with the rim being irregular, it's hard to cut it straight now when it's so soft. Let it firm up and, and then you can kind of trim it down. So I'll show you that um, next time when we put these together. All right, so there's So let's, let's do a test again. So that is close enough. They don't have to be 100% perfect because we can adjust it after we put it together next time. And so you can see that when they do touch each other, you create a closed form and now it's actually a lot stronger. You know, if you're comfortable, you could start to blend these together now. That is certainly one way that it could be done. But if the clay is so soft, I'm going to let it firm up. And I suggest you do the same. So I'm going to put these down. And if, 
it all depends on how warm your space is and the material you, you set it down on as to how long to leave it. I would check it after an hour in most situations of being uncovered, resting on its rim like this. And you want to make sure that it's kept at the soft leather hard stage. So you don't want to let it firm up to the point where you can't bend it at all. It should have a little bend to it. So I'm going to leave these out for about an hour and then um, I will pick up on uh, the next time, the next video about putting these together and creating the other elements to the teapot. So this is just a really simple way to start. I'm going to do another video in a minute here about starting with uh, slabs. So pinch pot is one way to do it, to create a sphere, two halves that we'll put together later. Another way is a slab. So I'm going to get set for that and do another video. Okay, thanks.